WCBI News at 10 starts now. Good evening, thanks for joining us. We're following breaking news tonight out of the city of Aberdeen. We understand a juvenile is dead after a shooting there and another person is injured. We understand the Aberdeen Police Department is investigating the shooting. Details are limited. We'll have more information for you as it becomes available. Also, breaking news tonight out of Columbus. Police are investigating a shooting on Juanita Street in East Columbus. City spokesman Joe Dillon says a man approximately 20 years old was shot in the leg during an altercation. Well, his injuries are believed to be non-life threatening. Police say the victim and another subject were in an altercation before that incident. We'll have more information on this story as well as it becomes available. Now for the other big story of the night. The Twin States are bracing for another blast of bone-chilling winter weather. For the latest developments, we turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson to get a first look. Hey, Keith. Well, Scott, right now up here in Memphis, far northwest Mississippi, there is some light snow developing, also eastern Arkansas. And you can see this band of snow that has been developing as we've gone throughout the evening hours. The front's moving through here right now. Temperatures still at or above freezing, but just below freezing to our northwest. Just north of downtown Memphis along I-40, you can see some wet roadways right there. It looks like there's a little bit of accumulation there on the grassier surfaces. 30 in Memphis, 25 Little Rock, where snow is falling. 35 in Columbus, 32 in Jackson. That cold air is coming our way. One right now in Kansas City. Southeast of the Natchez Trace Parkway late tonight and tomorrow, there's a chance for a trace to perhaps up to an inch of snow. Northwest of the Trace, a better chance for one to maybe two inches of snow. The highest totals overall probably just to our northwest where we may see two plus inches of snow out that way. So there's some winter weather, wintry weather coming our way. That band of snow will continue moving southeast during the night. And it looks like it will be out of here by about three or four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And then we're just cold. The full forecast got in just a few minutes. With temperatures expecting to drop overnight, most of our area will experience a flash freeze. Quentin Smith speaks with meteorologist Jacob Dickey to find out what this means for drivers and roadways. Road conditions are dry and clear now, but that won't be the case for long. Most of our area will see a flash freeze, which will result in icy roads and bridges for drivers. A flash freeze is when we have warm temperatures and if something comes through that makes those temperatures drop. So in this case, it's a very cold Arctic front. Our temperatures will drop 30, 40, 50 degrees by the time we go from Monday night till Tuesday night. These are images of roadways in North Mississippi from this past Friday. Tuesday's road conditions will look similar to this. When the flash freeze happens, drivers won't be able to tell when the water on the roadways turn into ice. Any water that may be on the roadway almost instantaneously turns to ice. That's the concern that we have with this. We'll skip the slushy mess in the middle. Uh, what happens is we'll see liquid on the pavement, and almost instantly when the flash freeze happens, it turns to ice. So black ice is called black ice because it oftentimes is the same color as the pavement. You won't know there's black ice in front of you on the road until you hit it and you feel your car start to lose control. With temperatures dropping into the teens, the hazardous road conditions could stick around through Wednesday. We'll see the cold Arctic air last for a couple of days. By Thursday, we start to warm things back up and we're back on our way to the 60s on the weekends. So it is a short duration event, but the time that we, we remain below freezing on Tuesday uh, afternoon through Wednesday, uh, those road conditions will not improve until we're able to get those temperatures back close to 32. Now, due to the inclement weather and bad road conditions that we are expecting, Mississippi Department of Transportation has trucks prepared and they are on standby to treat the roads and bridges if necessary. Reporting in Columbus, Quentin Smith, WCBI News. And for the latest on all of the weather developments, you can go to our website at WCBI.com, download our weather app, or follow us there on social media. A violent weekend across North Mississippi. A homicide investigation is underway in Noxipater after 47-year-old Carolyn Burnside was found dead inside her home Saturday. The home is located on Mary Cole Road. Tonight, her husband spoke with us and says he's shocked by this weekend. He says Burnside was involved, an involved member in her community, her church, and her family. If there was one thing Burnside leaves behind as a legacy, her husband said it would be her love. The legacy that she's going to leave that's here with us is her unyielding love. If, if you was a part of the community, if you was a part of the family, if you was a part of the church, you know, if you was a part of her life, you felt her love. 
The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation has taken over the investigation. We'll have more on this case as it develops. Shock and disbelief continues to set in after this weekend's tragic shooting inside the Starkville Walmart. Friends of Dr. Shauna DeWitt describing her as a good soul taken too soon. Our Dory Talley has more from those who knew Dr. Witt best. She was always the one that um, made you smile in the end. Flowers, a Bible, and a wreath now replace the crime scene tape that lined this door Saturday morning after Dr. Shauna Witt was shot and killed. Brittany Dinell Nichols was supposed to have an eye checkup with Dr. Witt around the same time the situation unfolded. She says it goes to show you just how precious life is and will really miss the smiling doctor. Perky energetic. I had my kids with me and this little one with me and he he normally don't go to everybody and hug them but he ran up to her and hugged her. She was like, oh my God, he is so adorable. She really connected with patients and their children. Bess Patterson had no idea Friday night would be her last time to talk to her best friend who's been by her side since 2005. She's always been there for me. Um, tough situations. I had a very high risk pregnancy with my daughter Molly. Um, her and Molly, she was actually Molly's godmother. A godmother best friend and a healer. No matter the role, friends, patients, and even fellow optometrists who went to school with Dr. Witt say she always lit up the room. She was just a down-home girl. She'd walk into a room and it's, hey y'all, you know, um, so sweet, so compassionate, so caring. She had so many friends. I mean, we were just all Shauna fans because she was just that girl. Patterson says although a lot has happened to her friend over the last several months, she never let the bad keep her from seeing the good. I know that she would want everybody to remember her as the happy person that always, always turned a negative situation into a positive situation. They is hoping to team up to set up a memorial fund in Dr. Witt's name. A celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. draws hundreds to a Tupelo church. Organizers say the dreams and message of the late civil rights leader can still bring healing and unity nearly 50 years after his death. WCBI's Ali Martin has more. From the music to the message. Tupelo's birthday celebration honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a central theme, working together in unity for a common goal. When Dr. King come in and he was peaceful, he was not a violent person. See, nowadays it is so much violent going on. And our young people need to understand that during that time, he was so peaceful. He believed in love, he believed in harmony, he believed in just, just all over, just being a loving person. The Modern Beautician Club organizes this event as a way to remember the sacrifices made by many during the struggle for civil rights and to correct injustices today. Those at the Tupelo celebration say Dr. King's message and method of nonviolent activism is relevant today in a society where disagreements often turn bitter and hateful. We can disagree and always be in a, in agreeable together. We can always, that old saying said, we can always sit at the table together and disagree, but when we leave, we need to be agreeable. And so that's, 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 that's the American way, and that's what love is. We want our community to be a community that loves one another, that respects one another, and we want to be able to help one another. So that's what the dream was all about. It was about coming together, being as one, being unified in the body of Christ. Young people were encouraged to not just think of MLK Day as another holiday, but to remember the difference one person can make in the face of overwhelming odds. He was trying to teach the whole world a lesson that uh, without a vision there's no progress. There is injustice, so it's important to remember our history so we don't repeat it and just celebrate the good things that have come and the progress we've made. I like about that it's a bunch of people gathered together to celebrate a man who helped us be free in the States. This is the 31st year for Tupelo's MLK birthday celebration. Allie Martin, WCBI News. That celebration is held at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. 
Residents also came together in Columbus to celebrate the life and work of Dr. King. This morning's commemorative breakfast at the Trotter Convention Center featured music, prayers, and a keynote address from Rust College President Dr. David Beckley. Those in attendance also reflected on how Dr. King's work was important to spreading a message of peace and unity. 36 in Tupelo, winds now from the northwest. The front has moved down to your area. For us, for Tuesday, we have a chance for light snow in every spot, so we'll be watching out for that. We all get into the cold air, too, but it won't last too long. The full forecast is next. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. So nice to see you. 1013 on our Monday evening. We are still dry around here. Temperatures mainly in the low to mid 30s, some cooler spots. But there's our Alpha Insurance Camera Network, Tupelo, Columbus, Vernon, Alabama at Durham's Pharmacy. We're doing okay right now, but snow just to our northwest. A winter weather advisory for most of us. Winter storm warnings for those areas in the pink where there could be some slightly higher totals. Let's show you where the snow is now. Again, Memphis out towards Little Rock. This band is filling on in. It will continue moving south southeast as we go throughout the course of the night. And here's a live view from I-630 in downtown Little Rock. You can see the snow accumulating right there. This is from Arkansas DOT. And there is some light snow in the air. It is accumulating. Same story in Memphis. The big story with this for us here, not so much the snowfall amounts, but any snow that you do see may fall, initially melt, and then freeze. We call that a flash freeze. And then some additional snow may fall down and compact on top of some of these roadways. So not everyone will see it, but if you do see some of these heavier totals, you may get into some of that. And also, we will all get the dangerously cold wind chills. So if you, by some reason, happen to miss out on a decent snow, you will definitely get the cold. It is 35 in Columbus, 30 in Memphis, 25 in Little Rock. We showed you Kansas City at 1 a few minutes ago. Here's our planner for tomorrow. 20s all day long. Winds from the northwest at 10 to 20. Wind chills in the teens and single digits. It is going to be a cold day. And afternoon temperatures here probably low to mid 20s. The warmest part of the day just after midnight. And our current thinking is still suggesting one inch or less southeast of the trace. Some spots maybe just a dusting. Farther northwest, a better chance for one inch plus. And if you get back to Oxford and let's just say Water Valley and perhaps out towards northwestern parts of Mississippi, a better chance for two plus inches of snow. These totals may be massaged as we get some new data later on tonight. Alex will have the very latest on sunrise starting at 430. By midnight, some snow is possible in the northwest. By 6 o'clock in the morning, along and west of the trace, generally speaking. And by noon, down towards the Golden Triangle area. This is one of our computer models. It's not gospel, but it's doing a pretty good job with a 15 to 1 snowfall ratio, 1 to 2 inches northwest. A trace to uh, maybe an inch down here in the southeast, but it just doesn't take that much snow to freeze and create some icy spots on those roads. So that's the big story here. Go to our website, WCBI.com. We have a complete list of closings. Now, speaking of the wind chill, teens tomorrow afternoon, and then we're down into the single digits above and below zero as we get into Wednesday morning. The snow gets out of here, I think, by 3 or 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And then we have this big area of Arctic high pressure coming on in. It's going to be sunny here midweek, but it is going to be cold. Struggling to get the freezing Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, well down into the low teens. Some of you may do some single digits here. A back above freezing Thursday, 51 Friday, 60s for the weekend. It may be cold outside, but things are heating up in gyms across the area. Robbie has hot high school hoops highlights coming up later in sports. Watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Each year, more than 200,000 cases of glaucoma are reported. It's most prevalent in 41 years, those, in, those 41 years of age and older. We learn more tonight in our Health Talk with Baptist. Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Bennett, an ophthalmologist on staff here at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. And tonight I want to talk to you about glaucoma. What is glaucoma? Well, glaucoma is a group of eye diseases that usually causes increased pressure within the eye. It usually happens when fluid builds up in the front part of the eye, and that fluid increases the pressure in your eye, which over time causes damage to the optic nerve. Now, the optic nerve is part of the central nervous system and carries visual information from the eye to the brain. The World Health Organization reports that glaucoma is the second leading cause of blindness globally. 
it's expected that 76 million people will have glaucoma by 2020. Of those affected, 11 million will be blind in both eyes. You might think of your eyes as a sink in which the faucet is always running and the drain is always open. The fluid in your eye is constantly circulating, nourishing the cornea and the lens inside your eye. And it's supposed to flow out through a, a tissue which serves as the drain of the eye. When this drain becomes clogged, however, fluid can't leave the eye as fast, causing the fluid to back up. This backed up fluid causes increased pressure to build up within the eye at its weakest point, where the optic nerve leaves the eye, resulting in slow cell death and permanent vision loss. Early diagnosis and treatment of glaucoma can help prevent blindness. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist where we'll discuss risk factors for glaucoma. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Coming up, high school hoops highlights from the Monroe County Tournament and with Columbus down at the Rumble in the South, next in sports. Here's WCBI Sports with Robbie Donahoe. How's this for a, a report? The Tuscaloosa News reporting that former Ole Miss head football coach Hugh Freeze was in Tuscaloosa tonight, potentially earlier today, interviewing for an open position on the Alabama staff, potentially the offensive coordinator position at Alabama. Now, according to the report from Aaron Suttles, Saban has always had a healthy respect for Freeze, and uh, Freeze will not face the NCAA sanctioned two game suspension if he takes a job as an assistant. That suspension only applies if Freeze is named a head coach. We'll continue to follow this story as it potentially develops into a new job for Hugh Freeze getting back into coaching. Well, Monday afternoon hoops, they are the best hoops. And with championships on the line, it makes it just a little better. The Monroe County Tournament titles on the line in basketball for boys and girls. We start with the fellas. It's the A game featuring Aberdeen versus Amory. This one was a good one. Early on for Aberdeen. Uh, Jaquette Young going to fire up a three, misses everything. And then off the carom, somehow Isaiah McMillan gets the ball back and gets the bucket. Aberdeen has the early lead. Amory would try to answer here. Trenton Gillen missing here, but Isaiah Thompson working hard in the paint, gets the hoop and the harm. Amory goes in front. Back would come the Bulldogs, though. It was a back and forth game. Jaquette Young finding Thalen Perkins, who has all three of these as the Bulldogs go in front. Back and forth, back and forth, ebb and flow. We've got Aaron Stringfield who equalizes on that three, or answers, I should say, on the three. And then more from Amory, breaking the press here. Brian Pearson's Panthers doing a great job doing that. It would end up with an Isaiah Thompson slam as Amory wins the Monroe County Tournament title 45-44 in a thriller over Aberdeen. How about the ladies? Hamilton facing Aberdeen. Lady Bulldogs can play some basketball, y'all. This is a program that's trying to get back up and running, and they've been doing pretty well as of late. That's Trinity McMillan with that basket that rolls in for Aberdeen. And then off the fast break, McMillan driving. She's going to not find a nice bounce pass here. Tamara Sice gets the two to go. Hamilton will try to answer them. Alexia Ware going to go to Talisha Verner, who's going to go off glass with the runner. That two goes. Going to the fourth quarter, Hamilton trailing, trying to get back in it. Tori Harrison going to find Amaya Verner. She's got a three that rattles home, but it was too much Aberdeen down the stretch. As Lady Bulldogs get a three right here, and they will be your Monroe County Tournament champions as they defeat Hamilton 56 to 31. All right, on down to the Jackson area. Columbus Falcons, that's Robert Wooder. They were taking on Forest Hill on the Rumble in the South. Good start for the Falcons and a great drive here from Greg King. Gets that basket to go, plus the foul. Later in the corner, Forest Hill trying to play his own defense. And if you leave the guy wearing number 12 open in the corner, you're going to pay every single time. That triple goes. He'd be the game MVP, Robert Woodard, had 22 points, 13 rebounds. Now, his counterpart was Ladarius Marshall, who is also a dandy dozen star. And Ladarius, watch him sort of cock back that ball and then slam it down with two hands. He had 20 points, eight boards, but it'll be Columbus's night. And anything you can do, I can do better, Mr. Marshall. Robert Woodard with the two hand slam. Falcons win at 49 42 over Forest Hills. They get a good win over the Patriots. All right, speaking of basketball, we're going to women's college hoops now. Mississippi State now up to number three in the newest AP Women's College Hoops poll. So the Bulldogs moved to 19 0 on the season following their 76 61 win over Alabama on Sunday. MSU now the only SEC team remaining without a loss, and they're one of three teams nationally that remain perfect, undefeated, without a blemish on the record. The move to number three matches MSU's highest AP ranking in school history and their 30th straight week ranked in the top 10. 
So this week, what it looks like for Ole Miss Mississippi State. Bulldogs will be on the road in Knoxville on Sunday. Now, MSU does not have a midweek game, so they'll have all week to prepare for the Lady Vols, who do have a midweek game. They're going to be at Notre Dame on Thursday. That's a top five game. Missouri will be at Ole Miss, so big test for Matt Ensel and the Rebels on Thursday, and then Sunday they'll be in Gainesville. For the men, we'll continue to follow the weather situation. Vanderbilt MSU is still on, expected to be played, but if anything changes, we'll let you know. Ole Miss will be in College Station tomorrow night, and then Rebels will continue that road show in Fayetteville on Saturday. Mississippi State will have a tough one against Colin Sexton in Alabama coming up Saturday night. That's all we have for sports. We will get a last look at that forecast. Make sure you stay safe out there tomorrow. We'll be right back. Another look at I-40 near Memphis, Memphis from the Tennessee Smartway camera there. You can see some of that snow trying to accumulate on those grassier surfaces. Wet rows, snow developing to our northwest that will continue moving southeast during the overnight hours. But those of you waking up in the Golden Triangle area tomorrow, including Columbus, there probably will be no snow happening at that time. The best chance for the snow tonight, northwest of the Trace. The heaviest total is likely northwest of the Trace between now and tomorrow afternoon. Anywhere from an inch or less southeast of the Natchez Trace Parkway. Alex will be in uh, by mid-morning, and then we'll have the latest starting on WCBI News Sunrise at 4.30. So tune in for the very latest updated forecast, the radar trends, all that good stuff. But we do know it's going to be cold tomorrow. Dangerous wind chill values just bundle on up. All right, yeah, and school closings all on our website at WCBI.com. Stay safe out there. Have a good night.